Welcome back. Inside today's episode, we're going to be talking about a recent 12-week study and if whole eggs can actually be a natural supercharger for your testosterone levels when consumed post-workout. What's up and welcome to Sam Miller Science, where you're joining me just over a decade into my personal journey of working to bridge the gap between metabolism, macros, muscle, and medicine, all while helping coaches scale the impact that they desire and deserve. If you are here, thank you so much for listening and for trusting me to help you elevate your coaching game or to lead you in your transformation to realize your true potential. In either case, each week I'll be sharing my methods, models, and message to serve as leverage for your specific goals. Without further ado, let's get on to today's show. Now, if we look at recent years and even past few decades in the health and fitness space, whole eggs were actually once demonized. So whole eggs were something that people would associate with higher cholesterol. And there are probably some people who may watch this uh, on YouTube who may still have that association with eggs and cholesterol. Uh, but the you know, the truth is we actually have to consider the nutrient density of whole eggs and the potential benefits. Now, if you're someone who is more on the macro tracking side of the health and fitness industry, you may have come into favor uh, egg whites because egg whites are nearly 100% protein. And so a lot of people will opt for egg whites over whole eggs. And especially in the bodybuilding community, egg whites are incredibly popular because of the amount of protein relative to the amount of calories in a given serving of that food and the ability to get a lot of protein in uh, relatively easily. So in the 1980s, 1990s, a lot of people were basically told to avoid whole eggs. And then you kind of progress forward from there. Egg whites increase in popularity uh, due to their widespread availability, popularity in bodybuilding, and their overall very low calorie, uh, but also very high protein in terms of overall consumption, and obviously very filling and voluminous when cooked uh, in a large amount. So now we've kind of come full circle and you see the animal-based community talking about eggs as a superfood because they contain key vitamins. They also have uh, nutrients like choline in there as well. And so from a nutrient density perspective, whole eggs are certainly a powerhouse. Now, Regardless, I would say there's still going to be a subset of people, you know, whether it's listening to podcasts or on YouTube, where people still favor egg whites because of the ability to kind of fit them in a given calorie count or uh, because of they're maybe playing a little bit of macro Tetris and opting to include fats from another area. And today we're going to talk about why that may not be a great idea based on this recent study kind of break down a 12 week research study and the implications in terms of not only just the protein intake that we're consuming, but also looking at this in terms of blood chemistry and what's going on with our testosterone levels as well. So this particular study compares the effects of egg white and egg yolk and that consumption post-workout and the results might actually surprise you. So let's dive into the study in itself. 12 week study done in men. So ladies, we may have to extrapolate a little bit as to how this might apply to women. Now women certainly need a lot of the micronutrients that are in whole eggs. We'll come back to that. But this study was done in men that tested egg yolks versus egg whites and uh, basically a few other parameters as well. The subjects were trained men, meaning they had at least a year of resistance training experience. So this is gonna be folks who have kind of been into fitness for a minute, must have taken zero supplements for at least a year before the study began. So that's actually an interesting combination, right? Very rarely do you have folks who have been training for at least a year, but taking no supplements. This is important because these men may have been lacking certain nutrients that egg yolks provide or whole eggs provide. As far as how the study was done, the men engaged in 12 weeks of a three day per week, basically an un undulating periodized plan. So this would mean that one day was 12 to 15 rep uh, maximum training, and then another was six to eight repetition maximum, and the third was three to five RM. Now, the calories, proteins, fats, and carbs were equal between the groups throughout the study. Now, naturally, if you were eating different amounts, you had different macronutrient totals, and this was not controlled, this would significantly impact the outcomes of the study. Now, this was not directly controlled by the researchers, so there is potential for a little bit of margin of error, but they were given guidelines and the dietary reports from the subjects were equal. Now, can you have accuracy of reporting issues in nutrition research? Certainly, but given the information we have here, we're gonna go off of that for the purpose of today's conversation. So the effects were not due to differences necessarily in the dietary 
reports. There might have been a little bit of margin for error there, but understand they did look at trying to keep those calories, proteins, fats, and carbs equal. They looked at various measures, including testosterone, growth hormone, cortisol, muscle cross-sectional area, hand grip strength, and also knee extension strength. Now, as far as what they found, probably the most striking finding was the increase in testosterone from the whole egg group. The whole egg group experienced an increase of at least 240 nanograms per deciliter. This is pretty substantial uh, and more than most, you know, you'll see people go and like shop for testosterone boosters or go buy certain supplements and eating these whole eggs actually was a greater increase than a lot of times what people will see from those over-the-counter supplements. So the whole egg group experienced an increase of 240 nanograms per deciliter at the end of the 12 weeks while the egg white group had a minor rise or minor increase. They do not report the exact baseline numbers of the men prior to the study, but they do plot the baselines on a graph so you can get a general sense. You can kind of reverse engineer some of it, uh, even if it wasn't necessarily reported initially. And what's interesting about this particular group and the people who were studied in this 12-week piece of research is they actually had fairly high testosterone levels on average to begin with. So these weren't people who were deficient or very low T, they were actually more normal to high or even above average compared to you know maybe a group that would be starting out in a place of testosterone deficiency or hypogonadism and then progressing from there. So the graph shows the average was actually maybe a little bit closer to around 900 nanograms per deciliter, which is pretty high for uh, men who are producing their own testosterone endogenous this means the whole egg group ended up at around 1100 or so, give or take a few points. This is a very important point because normally when you're looking at interventions and in research that raise testosterone, we're usually looking at research that will take something that's being studied, right? So there's some sort of variable that's being tested in the research and I'll raise it from a deficit to normal. And it's not usually that we're looking at something going from high normal to very high normal or even over you know, that reference range. So metrics that were better in terms of whole eggs versus the egg white group would be lower cortisol, they had more fat lost, and they had greater hand grip and knee extension strength. So these were the other variables tested in addition to testosterone. So really the only other one here, I think, that may have not had a significant difference would have been growth hormone. So the fat loss point is interesting since the men didn't change their calories from pre and post study. So you might be wondering why would we see results like this and how do we kind of explain what's happening here? So egg yolks are a nutrient dense powerhouse. When you have the whole egg combined with the egg white, not only are you getting dietary protein and dietary fats, but there's also key micronutrients and we're kind of getting this, uh, you've, you may have heard people describe a whole egg as nature's multivitamin. It's a very nutrient dense 70 calories per egg. Now cholesterol content may be an aspect because testosterone is synthesized from cholesterol and the men in the whole egg group were eating four times the cholesterol as the egg white group. But egg yolks also contain numerous different fats called phospholipids. So we have phosphatidylcholine along with three to four uh, basically others that could be considered when we're looking at this study. Now these phospholipids may have significant anti-inflammatory effects. For example, one study in individuals with metabolic syndrome compared three whole eggs to three servings of egg substitute per day. So that'd be something like egg beaters or maybe a egg white product that was kind of colored to look like eggs. And the group eating the whole eggs had lower levels of highly sensitive C-reactive protein, tumor necrosis factor, and interleukin-6, which is an inflammatory cytokine. So we're looking at multiple different ways that we're looking at immune system functionality and what's going on from an inflammatory response perspective. And if we're lowering inflammation, we're potentially making space or making room to raise testosterone levels. Typically, if we were to have very, very high inflammation or dysfunctional immune system, gut health issues, you know, this is not going to be great in terms of producing optimal testosterone. Part of this uh, you know, phospholipid conversation is also phosphatic acid. So this compound has been studied and even included, PA has been included from a supplement perspective uh, to basically examine if it increases mTOR and muscle protein synthesis rates as well. So this particular ingredient has been included in a number of different bodybuilding related products over the years. 
but when you're eating it in whole eggs, you're potentially getting this as part of um, this sort of phospholipid delivery system, if you will. So egg yolks contain a number of other micronutrients too that are very important, vitamin A, some B vitamins, selenium, phosphorus, calcium, potassium, and others. So it's kind of, you know, getting that fully formed vitamin A is very important. You have the potential for small amounts of vitamin D, some choline, lots of really good stuff here. So let's kind of wrap this up in terms of conversation around the study and what are some take home points? What can we do in terms of our nutrition to leverage some of the benefits here? And also what is the context where we might be applying this in terms of nutritional advice? So first and foremost, the main take home of the study is that if you're still living in basically only consuming egg whites, right? Or we were kind of afraid of whole eggs. Uh, you may need to work some whole eggs into your diet, especially if we are looking at optimal men's health and we're producing these hormones endogenously, meaning we are not on any type of hormone replacement therapy, we are not living in the world of enhanced bodybuilding where there's things like testosterone and performance enhancing drugs supporting those testosterone levels. So from a men's health perspective, very, very important. But for women, these micronutrients, you know, when we look at across the board, vitamins and minerals, choline, very important, not only in terms of women's health, and even supporting things like hair, skin, nails, uh, but also even conversation around fertility as well. So now let's have the conversation. Do you need to be eating these eggs post-workout, right? Is that really where we're seeing all of the results here? We have other literature looking at increases in muscle mass from whole eggs versus egg whites, and the researchers always have the individuals eat the eggs post-workout. So it is a little bit hard to say. This is something that in the research, they seem to consistently be including those whole eggs post-workout. This is most likely just a generalized effect. And in both situations, you're getting adequate protein post-workout, assuming they're having multiple eggs, right? Like one single egg is only six grams of protein. But if you're having, uh, you know, kind of multiple servings of egg whites or multiple whole eggs, it's going to be supportive of that post-workout recovery process. You are getting uh, a nice array of bioavailable essential amino acids. So we may want to consume it post-workout if that's one of your better sources of protein, but otherwise it's probably just a generalized effect of simply getting these whole eggs in daily. Now, if you need your post-workout meal for whatever reason, if you sort of fall into the camp of keeping this very, very low fat, or you tend to consume like a higher carb, uh, higher protein meal post-workout, you could potentially sort of broaden your horizons to maybe include a whole egg or two, or make sure you're getting it in outside of that post-workout window so that you are reaping the benefits of the whole eggs. So I wouldn't necessarily go incredibly hard in the paint with dietary fat post-workout if you are trying to you know, make room for carbs or you are trying to have more sort of rapid gastric emptying, if you will, but something like two to three whole eggs is putting you around 12 to 18 grams of fat based on the size of the egg. So this shouldn't be uh, terribly problematic. Again, this is gonna be different than if you were to have some sort of like ribeye or T-bone steak post-workout or like very, very large amount of uh, dietary fat. Just remember that's gonna slow down gastric emptying. It is going to be uh, something that takes longer to digest. But eggs, for the most part, unless someone's experiencing some more severe digestive issues, tend to be a food that's fairly easily digestible. And again, you could always include this a different time uh, during the day, but this particular research shows if you're looking for that testosterone boost, if you're someone who is still trying to naturally enhance their testosterone levels, maybe look at having a couple eggs post-workout or uh, maybe even three or four, depending on what your dietary fats allow. And you may still want to include additional protein uh, for muscle protein synthesis purposes and getting that adequate leucine in as well. But, you know, from uh, animal foods perspective, certainly a great choice to look at in terms of vitamin and mineral content, getting your essential amino acids in, and we still can consume some carbohydrates with this as well to replenish glycogen and really create a more well-rounded post-workout meal. So overall, looking at this study, certainly really interesting. Again, some caveats, we have a group of individuals who already have somewhat above average testosterone levels, but we still did see an increase. So it's still worthwhile to note that this is not looking at someone it's one thing to, let's say you had this number increased, right, uh, from someone who had a deficiency. That would be a much greater percentage of their overall testosterone levels if they had gone up by, say, 200 points. Like if you take someone from 200 to 400, that's a pretty large increase, almost magnificent increase in their testosterone levels. If you have someone who's at 
a level of 700 or 900 and they go up a couple hundred points. That's a smaller percentage of their overall testosterone level, but it's still a noteworthy increase, right? So looking at this, understand these people were not deficient. However, they had not been taking any supplements for a year prior to the study. So knowing that they hadn't been taking a lot of supplements, they may have had some different micronutrient deficiencies. The eggs could have been replenishing those things, but a huge percentage of the Western world and even people who are training are micronutrient deficient in some regard, or they have kind of suboptimal or subclinical status or subclinical deficiency of some kind. So getting more micronutrient dense foods, usually not a bad idea for most people in the Western world because most of our calories in many cases tend to be coming from more hyper palatable multi-ingredient foods that are not super micronutrient dense so pretty cool study overall and something to include again to extrapolate this for women where this might be beneficial is you know the micronutrient conversation choline getting some essential amino acids a lot of women don't necessarily always eat adequate protein to support muscle growth so looking at it from a lean body mass perspective i still think it's a worthwhile conversation even if it's not solely to look at testosterone levels and many women in the western world still looking to optimize those testosterone levels and you know have it for not only healthy energy and recovery from the gym but also building lean body mass. If you are someone who's interested in being more active, building lean muscle, then certainly need to have adequate protein there. And whole eggs are a potential way to enter that conversation along with you know, other uh, lean proteins from animal sources. So here we go, looking at this whole egg study. If you wanna learn more about this, there's a couple. So the original research, we have um, combination. There's a uh, piece of research by Bagheri, and this was 12 weeks of resistance training in young males, a randomized control trial, basically comparing whole egg versus egg white ingestion. And there's another piece of research by Santos, which is the effect of whole egg intake on muscle mass. Are the yolk and its nutrients important? This was from February, 2024. Uh, so a new piece of research uh, released, if you wanna check that out, that's the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism. So plenty of more research to dive into if that's your thing. If you just like the little cliff notes via podcast or YouTube, then that's what the video and the audio is for. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support the content here by leaving a five-star rating and review on audio or sharing the show with uh, whoever it is that you think might benefit from the content. Or if you have followers who are interested in health and fitness, screenshot the show, tag me. I'm at Sam Miller Science on just about every major platform. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can either leave a comment, but also make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any episodes. A lot of the folks who tune into our content regularly, who are watching the content, who download the content or consume the content on audio, you guys may not be subscribed, which means you're missing stuff. We drop episodes and also shorts multiple times a week. So if you're on audio, you're probably used to seeing about three pieces of audio content weekly. If you are on YouTube, you're potentially seeing multiple long format and uh, some YouTube shorts on there as well. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. I'm at Sam Miller Science on YouTube and you can always grab the audio feed when you're on the go and that's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you are on Apple Apple Podcasts and Spotify, leave that rating and review so people know they can find some good content here. And it takes about 10 seconds and really supports the work that my team and I have been doing over the past few years. I appreciate you guys, and I will talk to you in the next show.